What is up guys, California Phantom here to weigh in on the DJI geofencing debate. By now, you've probably heard from most YouTube personalities, Billy Kyle, 51 Drones, Ken Heron, as well as others, as it relates to this geofencing. DJI themselves have released a press conference or released information about their opinion of why they changed the geofencing rules. And I think there's some interesting things to be had there. Starting my commercial drone adventure nearly 13 and a half years ago, I was right around the Phantom 2 Vision I can say the number one most annoying things as a commercial pilot is dealing with DJI Fly and their geofencing uh, software limitations. I cannot tell you how many times I have requested the proper documentation from the FAA, uploaded it to DJI, requested the information, imported it to my drone, only to discover way out in Chico, California, or more north than that, uh, where seg cell signal is more sparse, that my drone has to either sync with my flight logs to DJI, or I have to do an additional step like re-logging into my account for the removal of the geofence to work. This has created giant headaches, um, a few circumstances. I've lost work opportunity having to reschedule and then have the client drop out. It's a very unprofessional thing to have happened as a commercial pilot. And it's a few, only happened thankfully a few times in my 13 years doing the commercial drone pilot space. But I can tell you it's the most nerve-wracking, frustrating, anger-inducing thing that can possibly happen to you. How does this fit in with DJI's ruling? Well, I think personally, as it relates to those of us in the commercial space and even in the normal consumer space, this is great across the board. I know many tens of thousands of people have communicated to me through forum, through Facebook groups and others about the top three significant features they want in a drone. Oftentimes what came up was geofencing. Um, it was that much of a problem to those. And I know many of the YouTubers out there have this sort of mixed reaction as it relates to drones um, with geofencing or without geofencing. I think, again, it's a great uh, thing that DJI did. And I have some theories on why they did it. Number one, um, it's something that I've been ranting about for years. If you're a fan of my channel or you go back to any of my videos talking about geofencing, we've seen this even in the Ukraine-Russian war, DJI drones being used in areas that absolutely had no uh, you know, temporary flight restrictions or just outright banned areas. The, the ultimate statement of what I'm trying to get at is you, you can look up on any news article, just type away in Google, drone flying into stadium, drone flying into Super Bowls, drones flying into a bunch of different sensitive areas. The, the reality was the geofencing did not prevent people from flying in these sensitive areas and places that they shouldn't be flying. And ultimately, life uh, finds a way. Or in this case, idiots find a way. I think it's ultimately why geofencing doesn't work. It never worked before. It will not continue to work. And if anything, it adds an additional layer of liability. That's the key thing here uh, is liability. If DJI proclaims that geofencing can prevent unauthorized flights into these sensitive areas and DJI drones are continuing to enter these sensitive areas, then it wouldn't take long before the government or local law enforcement to possibly start sticking the blame at DJI instead of the actual pilot in control. As a company, if you have software embedded in your drone and you put out claims that this prevents flights from these sensitive areas and the sensitive flights keep being uh, conducted, then logic would suggest at some point when you're making the claim 
that it can't do something and it's doing it, then you could very well be on the hook uh, for liability. So it's smart in my opinion to, now that we have a system through the FAA, you have multiple apps out there to fly responsibly, uh, to put it back into the user's hands. Um, I know the theory is, is we're gonna, ha we're gonna see a lot more people flying into these sensitive locations and a lot more idiots causing problems that could result in further legislation against drones. I actually think that it's not gonna improve or decline in any way. I think there's a certain amount of idiots that exist in this world, a certain amount of idiots that exist in the United States that buy these drones to purposely fly irresponsibly uh, for whatever number of reasons personally in their life they'll do whatever they want to do and they're going to continue to fly in these sensitive locations and geofencing or not not going to prevent this the only thing that removing geofencing does is it makes all the law-abiding citizens all of the commercial pilots who have struggled with this geofencing system for years to have a more pleasurable experience because now all i have to deal with right now is faa I have to get my waiver, I have to know that I'm in the right, I have the proper documentation if I'm stopped, but I'll be honest with you, in 15 years of flying, I have never been stopped by law enforcement as it relates to a commercial flight. I've had a few roll up on me asking what I'm doing, but continue leaving without requesting any documentation. So ultimately, I'm glad that DJI has removed the geofencing, but I'd love to hear your opinions down below. If you can, drop me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys, and we'll catch you on the next adventure.